On the banks of the Carson River is where we start our next adventure into the Drysdale National Park. Now of the 96 national parks in Western Australia, the Drysdale is one of the larger ones in the Kimberley region. Its landscape is made up of rugged escarpment, it's remote and it's ready to explore. It's been on my hit list for a while. Access to Drysdale National Park via the old theatre track has been closed for some time now which has led to most of the tracks in the park becoming overgrown. We have permission to try and access the area from the north via Carson River Homestead. Depending on the track conditions, Ronnie knows of a campsite on the northern boundary of the park called Barking Owl Camp. Just got a glimpse of the Carson River. Ronnie and boy, the water level's down this year. Yeah, I don't think this crossing will be wet for long, mate. I think it should dry up shortly. And the Drysdale National Park that we've got in our sights, you've been there before, have you? Yeah, I've been there before once and traditionally my uncle belongs to that country. What he does is take some of the troubled teenage boys from Colombaroo and takes them out onto country there and do some working and stuff like that. He all like in a partnership with the Carson River pastoral lease. So yeah, in the middle of the year they go out mustering and stuff like that. He's pretty active. Oh, that sounds awesome, Ronnie. Right? And the Carson River homestead, that's actually abandoned at the moment, or they use that when they're mustering? Yeah, they pretty much use it when they're mustering and stuff. Uh, most of the time when I'm doing my tours coming through, they're always there and with a greeting smile. <laughs> but yeah, they, they do use it quite a bit now, not like uh, before. No, fair enough. Looks like an interesting national park with the Drysdale River right through the heart of it. Hopefully some of those gorges and waterfalls might have a bit of water in it. We'll see how we go. Fingers crossed they'll have still a bit of uh, water in there. exciting I thought it was all right and then it started going down like, hang on a minute uh, but at least it's only short distance there bit of right foot on the Umbi Express there very nice all right Ronnie I think this is the turn off here but it actually looks pretty overgrown. Do you want to pop out in front? Yeah, mate, um, that'll be no worries. Yeah, make some room and I'll come by. Yeah, plenty of room here. Yeah, it doesn't look like much of a track. So, uh, yeah, let you follow your nose. You know this land. Yep, I hope so. <laughs> nah, it's all good. <laughs> mate, if you're lost, we're all in trouble. <laughs> Finding I'm having to wear my glasses a lot today because my eyes are actually quite sore. I have a mild eye infection. I went to the doctor before I came out and she said to me not to go anywhere where there's a lot of dust. So if you look at my rear view mirror now, she would not be pleased with what's there. Now, if you do have any niggling health issues before your trip, make sure you go and see a doctor then and get the right medications to take away with you. Because once you're out here, you're in no man's land. So help is very hard to get. And I also carry three different first aid kits. One of the main ones I use for contains things like uh, dry cough medicine, chesty cough medicine. So if you've got one person in the crew coughing during the night, keeps everyone up. And I've got things like disposable scalpels, which you might think is a bit over the top, but I have used them to cut fishing hooks at a crew member's fingers and we've got things for diarrhea and vomiting now if you've got gastro in the camp you really need to get on top of that quick smart because you can get dehydrated out here and get into all sorts of trouble pretty quickly so 
if you can be prepared just with a few things to ease the symptoms of a few different ailments it'll really take a lot of the stress out of that situation that you might find yourself in so be prepared hey Ronnie do you mind give me a hand just to put some covers on the camper trailer just to save some scratches yeah no worries mate that sounds um sounds awesome some cover for the trailer the guys from Lifestyle have given me some really neat covers to put on their camper trailer just to save any scratches down the side. So we'll put them on and then we can keep moving on this track. That's pretty easy. Yeah. It fits like a glove, eh? Hey? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's good to see you know, a bit of protection for your caravan too from scratches and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's never a nice feeling hearing that scratches down yeah. the side. Oh. Yeah, especially on your one too. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Feeling more confident. <laughs> Feeling more confident with that protection down the side of the camper trailer. It just paid off then. I had to rub up against a tree and it has saved it from any scratches. Hey Penny, you got a copy there mate? Yeah mate, right behind you. Yeah, look at that escarpment off onto our left there. Beautiful. Yeah, it's really changed, hasn't it? The countryside's opened up, sun going down, it's quite pretty. Yeah, and at the end of that uh, bit of range there, you see, that's where our camping spot is. Hopefully it's got a, um, some water trickling through there. Okay, cool. So we're getting closer and I reckon we may need a whippersnipper for camp looking at the grass around us here. What do you reckon? Oh, mate, I think definitely need a whippersnipper. <laughs> These grass are just unbelievable at the moment. Never fear, I've got that new machete there I wouldn't mind trying out. Yeah, that might be good. We can definitely use that. <laughs> this is the type of track that I live for. It's one that's not easily distinguished. You've got to keep checking your maps and your surroundings to make sure you're on the right bearing because the track will often disappear and your surroundings around you can look the same so it's good to keep a close contact with the vehicle in front of you i'm lucky enough to have ronnie guiding me but this type of remoteness this is what makes me tick i love it yeah i reckon we should uh find a bit of clearing around here and um yeah put up a tent for the night yeah, sounds like a great idea, mate. And um, yeah, no whippersnipping required here by looks of things. Yeah, we get to save uh, uh, your machete for one more night, I think. Kind of disappointing, but yeah, I'll have to wait. <laughs> This will do us nicely for tonight, but at first light we need to find out what happened to the track we were following and the campground we were aiming for. The drone can cover ground quickly and help point us in the right direction. Yeah, because if we, if that's so, we're too far down, I believe. We, we need to be over this side of that mountain, yeah. do we? Yeah, because you were talking about that escarpment. Yeah. With a plan formulated, the quad bike is the next trick up our sleeve to deploy. <laughs> <laughs> There's no brakes then. <laughs> so the quad bike has been deployed. We had a look on the drone this morning and couldn't actually see where the track leads to. So with the quad bike down, that's such an important tool for us. It can find the track and they've also got the drone on board so they can put that up as well. So we want to make sure we're heading in the right direction before the whole crew goes out there. But it should be a really nice camp spot. Hopefully we can find it. Ronnie's ability to sniff out an old track is almost uncanny. Yeah. Oh, Stephen's still running. Uh, oh, yeah, yep. 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 The uh, back there when I went around the other side of the tree, chainsaw marks. Yeah. We're on him, mate. We're on him. Yep. Uh, 
Wow, okay. There you go, there's your right. Yeah, so you're right, I was right where that crack in the ground was. Yeah. What ground our quad bike can cover in an hour would take a whole day in the Land Cruisers to do the same. What did you find out on the quad bike? You obviously found a, something. Yeah, um, we had to backtrack a bit where I thought the uh, campsite was. Uh, we actually went through, took the long way around to find it. Uh, we found something that absolutely resembled exactly uh, what I saw the last time I was here. Then on the way back out, we bumped into the road. So we followed it back in and um, yeah, sure enough, we was on the right path. Excellent, it's been four or five years since you've been out here, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it really done my head in um, when I was there because everything changed a lot since then. Um, I was thinking whether I was at the right place or not and yeah, really was uh, second guessing myself and um, <laughs> good thing I was right uh, uh, finding the road. So yeah, no, I'm pretty happy with myself. <laughs> now you've done well mate and are you pleased to be back in the aircon instead of being on the quad? It's 38 degrees out there today. Yeah, she was a bit hot today. I'm riding around on that quad, uh, yeah, took a lot out of me after I had a uh, you know, beautiful lunch. Oh, I tell you what, I'm ready for a bit of a nap now. <laughs> <laughs> so the producer Brian, my husband and Ronnie spent probably two and a half hours on the quad bike when they went out uh, earlier. It took them quite some time to find the track because like Ronnie said, it's changed so much and that's the nature of this country. It's ever changing every season. Hopefully we are going to make it to the new camp tonight, closer to the river. Might even chuck in a line, see if there's some barra. Cause I, yeah, I didn't realize there's so many barra up here. So pretty excited to win a line. Wow, we are going into some really thick grass now. I'm hot on Roddy's tail. I don't want to lose him and lose where I'm going. Well, got about 50 metres, then we've got some thick, uh, what do you call them, paper bar. Oh, okay, yep, yep. Yeah, I'm just thinking with Penzo, might have to get you just uh, push a few over. Yep, yep. Come through. No, no worries. Uh, I'll guide you through where I think the, I can see where the camp is. It's growing up high. Yeah, yep. Yeah, but um, it's a flat spot and then straight down and you've got a bit of river sand and then the river. And then the river, oh, so, okay. yeah, we'll... Uh, Get Penzo in. I'm just worried that she's not going to have enough room to manoeuvre, so if we just knock a couple down and yeah. get him. No worries, I can turn it into a bulldozer. Bulldozer job. <laughs> Sound good on that? Yep. I'll spin around and get back in front of you. No worries, brother. Yeah, Penzo, I'm going to have to turn the, the Umbi Express into an Umbi bulldozer. We'll try and clear the path a bit more for you. Yeah, cheers, really appreciate it. How's that there, Penny? They're down a bit for you? Yeah, perfect. Thanks, mate. It's coming through now. Really, really good, mate. It's so much easier. Cheers, mate. No worries. Glad to help, mate. Well, mate, I think we're here. This is the campground. Definitely need a whippersnipper for this place. Fantastic. We made it. What a journey to get here. It, was, it didn't take us too long, but uh, I think it was all to the, the hard efforts that you guys put in those hours on the quad bike this morning. No, this is great. Thanks, Ronnie. Oh yeah, she was a bit of a challenge trying to find a place, um, but I'm glad we did and now it's shower, or well, not shower actually, taking a dip in the river now. <laughs> Relaxing. Made it, woo hoo hoo. What a journey. Upside of it is, the grass does look high, but like literally you roll over it with the uh, quad bike and it flattens it all out. Yeah. So I'll just flatten a little spot for you. Uh, Ronnie's got a nice little spot here. He's already got it mowed down. I was yeah. looking at that earlier, I think he was eyeing it off. <laughs> but uh, through there, probably be still with the quad bike, but only maybe 50 metres, and you're at the river. Fabulous. From what we saw in the drone earlier, there's some deep sections and then there's some shallow sections, so we can find somewhere to have a paddle. Yeah, no, that sounds We great. are in croc country, but if you can see the bottom, should be right. Laughing. Yep. We'll send Ronnie first. That's the ticket. <laughs> He wasn't you supposed to hear that. No, damn it. <laughs> Always listening. <laughs>
Barkingale Camp had previously been the base camp for geologists dating and documenting rock art along the Ashton Ranges. This spot was chosen due to the Drysdale River holding water year-round even after a particularly poor wet season. Ronnie had to shoot back to Columba Roof for the day, so BJ and I decided to venture to the other side of the Drysdale River to explore. I reckon, see that rock face up there? Yep. If there's going to be any rock art, because that looks right on the bend of the river. I'm going to grab the GPS today because I want to find the quad bike later. Yeah, get our bearings. Got water? Yeah, got plenty of water. Got me walking boots on, hat, sunscreen, yeah, and a satellite phone. So, yeah. I'll just mark the spot. Yep. yep. Got it. Excellent, here we go. I've actually been super excited about this. <laughs> yeah, I always love finding this sort of stuff. Yeah, it's like a treasure hunt. It is. We've left the quad bike at the base of this escarpment and we've come probably three quarters of the way up and we're just looking around this side to see where we could get up this next ledge and we notice just under this crevice here is a little snake. He's curled up. He looks quite pretty actually but uh, don't want to activate him, don't want to get him moving and you definitely need good walking boots for here and also possibly a handheld GPS and even if you do have that before you start your walk make sure you get a couple of bearings and a couple of landmarks that you can reference to so you don't get lost because it all looks the same once you're up here. Here we go, this is what I've been looking for. This is a prime example of some rock art. It is a little faint and there's plenty more in this area. And so much so that a team of geologists came in about five years ago, spent eight months here, laser dating and archiving all the art through this area. Now, a big thank you to the traditional owners, to Ronnie's uncle and his mob for letting us explore these rocks and this escarpment through here. And if you wanna come here yourself, you need to get permission and then you can come and see some other art in the area. I just wanted to show you this one piece. There's more here, but out of respect for the traditional owners, I just wanna show you this one. <laughs> yeah, it's um, definitely had to get your bearings to make sure you come down in the right place again, doesn't it? I know. If it wasn't for that mountain over there, you'd be walking around in circles, wouldn't you? Yeah, for sure. And sitting up where that rock art was, what a vista they had, what a view. We jumped up about 80 metres in height, eh? Did we? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, quad bike should be just over here. There it is. Ah, see sweet. Scrub. <laughs> How's a good day? Yeah. How about something sweet this afternoon? Yeah, I'm up for a sweet, um, yeah, sweet tooth. When we were rolling around with Ronnie earlier. I reckon you can make something nice out of it. It's nice and sweet. Okay, is it red in colour? It might be. <laughs> think I know what you're thinking. Okay. I was hoping it'd be a bit of a surprise. <laughs> I'm on to you, well of you. These ones look pretty ripe, Ronnie. Yeah. I believe what Penn's got in mind, mm -hmm. we're going to need a fair bit. Is this the outside that we're looking for? Well, it's the outside that gives us the red part. Yep. The inside, we actually do something else with that, but we've got to get a few of these. So I've got the dish over there. I reckon. How much do you reckon? Oh, maybe about a kilo of them. Whew. I don't know. <laughs> That's a lot. I, I got an idea for her to do something, but I didn't know how she's going to do it. <laughs> oh, we'll get enough to throw throw a fair few into this little bowl. A very that, um, acidic taste. Acidic taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice one. Yeah, native 
native rosella they call these things or uh, native hibiscus. Mm -hmm. They're not native but. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll put a claim to them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> these remind me of a kid when you eat them like this like a green mulberry. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah, yeah. you can eat them not gonna kill you. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I should stop eating them. Mate. I know. Get <laughs> some for the jam. <laughs> I really enjoy cooking with the local produce wherever I find myself camped up. Tonight we're going to cook some rosella jam to have with some damp. I reckon that sounds pretty good to me. The boys are pretty excited. And what they've done, they've gone on an expedition on the quad bike and collected the rosellas for me. They've peeled off the outer casings here, the red part, chopped it all up in this container here. And we also need this inner green seed pod here. Don't throw that away. Put that in a separate pot like this one here. We'll cover that with some water about a centimetre or two above those seeds and we'll boil that for about 20 minutes. And that is actually going to act as the setting agent for the jam. So it's kind of important that we keep these. We'll keep the water from those seed pods and we'll discard the actual seeds, but we do need that water for the next step. So now next step is to pour your water in. Like I said, about a centimetre over the top of the seed pods. We'll pop that on to boil. Don't stress if you feel like you've got too much water. It's better to have more than not enough. So we'll pop that onto the stove for 20 minutes and you do actually need to cover it with a lid. I've just taken the seed pods off the stove and we're gonna simply put the water into the outer casings of the rosella here. It's got a distinct smell, these seeds. That's what your pods look like when they've been boiling for a bit done with those now. Look at this beautiful red colour there. Now it may look like we don't have enough liquid in there but just remember that the fruit itself is 85% water. I'm going to pop it back onto the stove to reduce down and we'll put the sugar in at the end. For this step you actually leave the lid off the saucepan because you want it to reduce down. You can give it a stir every now and again but it'll take about 20 minutes to reduce right down. And in that 20 minutes, I'm gonna get my damper ready to go on the fire. Okay, it's ready to go in the camp oven. And we'll cook this in the coals with the lid on for about 25 to 30 minutes. We'll keep checking it just to make sure we're not burning it because cooking on a campfire can be a bit temperamental. This has reduced down really nicely now. I've still got it on a low heat. And the final step is to add in the sugar. Because I'm out in the bush, I don't have all the normal cooking utensils that I would have in the kitchen at home, so I've had to improvise. I'm using my fork as a measuring instrument because I need to double the volume of liquid in this saucepan with sugar. So I've put my fork in here and I'm using that. It's up to halfway on the fork at the moment, so I know that I need to bring it up to the top of those fork tines to make sure I've got enough sugar in here. Now you can use any sort of sugar. This is all I've got at the moment, so it's gonna do fine. Just stir that all in. We'll keep it on the heat until it's all combined. I've taken this off the stove and it's a really nice consistency. I'm happy with that. It's pretty hot still. However, we are hungry and we wanna eat it with our damper. So I'm gonna put it into this container here and cool it down a little bit. Mm, it smells really good too. It's quite warm, but we'll let that cool and uh, have it with our damper. Smelling this damper cook smells amazing. Here we go, Ronnie. This is your one. Enjoy that around the fire, mate. No there you Thank go. You. Give Looks me a spoon. Beautiful. Got your cup of tea. We're set. Yep. <laughs> it's a moment of truth, Ronnie. We need a test taste. Yep. Mmm. Mm. That is really good, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So sweet. Especially with that damper, too. Yeah. It? That came out beautiful. Nice. We probably shouldn't say how good it is because everyone else is going to want this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the recipe is on our website, topofdownunder.com.au. I've certainly enjoyed our time exploring around the Drysdale National Park. Barking Owl Camp was to the northern end of the National Park. The track leading into the park's campsite is overgrown and pretty much non-existent. Now if you'd like permission to access that area at Barking Owl, contact the Bolongara Aboriginal Corporation and they'll be able to help you out.
Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next week on Top of Down Under.